Hey guys, welcome to another FIFA 21 career mode video here on the Early Access version via the EA Sports Game Changers program. As ever, this is an early version of the game and isn't necessarily reflective of the, the final product and any player ratings you see here are last year's ratings. This build doesn't have up-to-date ratings, but we're not necessarily in intrigued or interested in the actual ratings of players today, more so how to change them this season. We're going to have a look at the development plans and I'll show you how they work in FIFA 21 career mode. Training is going to be a separate video. Training is different this year. You do not improve your player's stats by training at all. You improve your player's stats by using the development plans. I'll go into why training is different in the training video, which will either be out already or be coming out in the next few hours or next couple of days on the YouTube channel as you see it. To make sure you don't miss that or any of the other deep dives into the new mechanics or, of course, the Chelsea miniseries when it starts or budget videos, etc., etc., a couple of experiments on the way as well, then do drop the video a like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well with a notification bell ticks. That way you definitely won't miss a video and there's a lot on its way to you. So what we're going to do today is show you what the development plans look like and give you an idea of what options you'll have for each position so you can kind of plan in your head and make advanced plans for what you want to do with the club that you're going to take over in your first save. Here, as the example, we're going to be using Manchester United. So you can see in the squad hub, things look a little bit different and your status, stats, development and financial. Development is the new one. That's normally where the old attributes uh slate was but you can see by default everybody has a balanced development plan you can see the match impact here i.e what their morale is what their sharpness is and again on the right hand side you can see their fitness as well with a little lightning bolt you can see skill moves and weak foot and everything else you you could see previously here but the most the most crucial thing is going to the development plan so we'll go to development plan here with david de Gea. And you can see even goalkeepers, you can change how they play. You can see how long it's going to take for them to become or to grow to the next. Sorry, you can see how long it's going to take them to grow to the next overall rating in the top if they stay or if they change. So with a balanced on all players with a balanced growth plan, every stat will grow at a slow rate. So if you want to just if you're happy with how people are at at any given moment and you want them just to grow across the board, leave them unbalanced. Basically, what I'm going to do here today in this video is go through each position and show you what the options are for that position and give you an idea of how long it might take to change any given player to that position or how it's going to speed up or perhaps conversely slow down their growth throughout the course of the save. So at balanced, it's going to take David De Gea 18 weeks to get that final bit to 90 rated, training everything. But you can see if you want to train him to just be goalkeeper, uh, so you're only training here his diving and his reflexes because his defensive work rate goes up, it's going to take eight weeks to change to a sweeper keeper. His handling, his kicking, most importantly for a sweeper keeper distributing the ball, and his positioning are going to go up and his weak foot also will increase, which is going to be very important for distribution. And you can see these two, seven or eight weeks to 90 rated for David Zahir, whereas 18 weeks is the uh, the progress if you leave him on just goalkeeper. Uh, just out of curiosity, I haven't double checked this yet. I'll see what it's like for uh, other goalkeepers in that position. So balanced, the, the actual stats to improve are going to be... Uh, the same ones, but the time is different. And you can see it's, it's going to take a few weeks for, uh, for, is it Luke Grant? Lee Grant. Lee Grant to go up and Dean Henderson also 16 weeks, 12 weeks and 11 weeks because he's, he's not as far along that progress bar as David De Gea is, who's very close to 90 rated by default. But again, it's going to have the same effect on every player in that given position. So looking forward then towards the other players in different positions, Brandon Williams, for example, at left back. Of course, the overall ratings are subject to change and will be different when the full game launches. So if you're looking to train a left back, and I imagine we'll double check that 
these options are the same for right back, similarly right wing, left mid, or right mid, left mid, right wing, left wing, etc. Balanced again, training everything across the board, and it'll take him 23 weeks to grow from 75 to, 7, to 76 rated. If you want him to be a wide back, then it is more specific, and his defensive rate, work rate, sorry, will increase. Uh, this will concentrate on his dribbling and his passing, as well as his defensive stats, but not his stand tackle, crucially. His stamina will improve, though, as a wide back, presumably because he'll be, because he's not tucked in so narrow, there'll be a lot of lateral movement in his positional uh, activities as well as going forwards and backwards. That will take him 16 weeks to improve. Also 16 weeks is the, an attacking wide back, meaning obviously he's going to push further forward. Now he already has a high attacking work rate, so that's not going to change anything here. So perhaps you might want to concentrate on another development plan to improve his stats knowing that his work rate is already high and he's going to push forward anyway but of course with wide back it doesn't improve his pace and as a an attacking player you kind of want his pace to improve again not affecting his stand tackle or any other at all of his defensive stats other than his slide tackle but improving his passing so he's going to be able to be more involved in the uh, the play further up the field ball control will improve but uh, you won't see an improvement in dribbling or anything of that nature, nor agility and balance. So unless someone already has pretty decent stats in those areas, to start off with at least, you might want to lean away from using an attacking wing-back uh, option in the development plan. I think, in general, a great way to do it is maybe play for a season at balance, so everything kind of comes up that next level and then kind of prioritise where you want to play someone or how you want someone to play. That's, I think, how I'm going to do it. But obviously, you'll have your own opportunities to do so 17 weeks for an inverted wing back and uh, again not quite so uh intensive on the passing side of things dribbling does get a little bit more of an, a look in here and stand tackle goes up which in my view is the more important uh, tackling stat over slide tackle interception goes interceptions go up as well and again physically stamina goes up and it does also improve his pace then the defensive wing back side of things acceleration improves it will up his defensive work rate and again a heavy focus on his defensive and physical stats as well as reactions which of course are important when interceptions come into play as well that's how you'll be able to train your left backs and your right backs consider almost Development plans kind of working like chemistry styles in Ultimate Team, where you get certain boosts to certain stats by using a certain chem style. You'll get certain boosts to certain stats by using a certain development plan. The difference being, in career mode, the improvements are continual and will keep going, whereas in uh, Ultimate Team you get that instant boost, but they don't go up any further unless they get another special item. So that's what it looks like for left backs. With regards, I'll just double check and show you, prove to you that with right backs, you get the same options. So on the right hand side, wide back, attacking, inverted, defensive, etc. Doing the same thing. With regards, centre backs. Have a look at Captain Harry. Although whether we'll still have the captaincy, I'm not sure after everything that went on in Greece. Uh, to start off with, again, balanced everything going up. Well, not actually, no, crucially, not everything going up at all across the board. There are a couple here like composure and strength and aggression and slide tackle that won't go up at all on balance. They'll stay as is. That's news to me. Previously, whenever I'd looked, I don't think that was the case with the uh, the wingbacks. I'll just double check. I think everything was going up, wasn't it, for them at wingback? Ah, oh, no, aggression was the only one with a little line through it that I hadn't noticed. So... Uh, for Harry Maguire, on at least balanced, not everything will go up across the board. So you will actually have to be more specific in what development plans you choose. And that's news to me. I'm learning this as I'm recording it, as you guys are learning it too. So the options you have at centre-back is stopper, which will improve defensive work rate. Pace, which for someone like Harry Maguire is going to be pretty important. Physical stats across the board, although strength and aggression, again, aren't going to improve at all. Defensive awareness and slide ta and stand tackle, sorry, and ball control. For a sweeper, it's going to be more leaning towards overall sprint speed, 
Agility and reactions. Agility is going to be important if a player in a sweeper role is going to be move, moving about more and he's going to have to be more mobile in a, in a defensive role. Defensive awareness. Your positional awareness is going to have to be much better if you're moving about a bit more and have more positional freedom. And then obviously, as you can see, jumping and stamina. A ball-playing defender. This is probably going to be the one that I'm going to favour more in my own series. It's going to improve the player's ability on the ball as well as improving their stamina and their and their uh, defensive stats. It's also going to improve their passing and their uh, ball control, etc., which for me is going to suit my own style of play. And then there's the defensive centre-back role, which improves pace massively, high defensive work rate. Did it, these are oh, ball-playing defender actually improves the weak foot, which is good to know. And uh, then defensive centre-back, again, pace, short passing. So actually, this could be an alternative to ball-playing defender as well. Reactions, both tackling options, although here, slide tackle doesn't improve. I'll double-check and see if that's just Harry Maguire or all centre-backs. And then uh, stamina goes up as well. Let's see if that is the case for all centre-backs or if that's just Harry Maguire. Because again, I'm learning, this is the first time I've gone through this, so I'm learning here as we go as well. And you can see, actually, yes, on balance, everything for Eric Bailly is growing. Everything is growing. So it is going to be slightly different with regards... That basically, by default, you can see that all of the individual stats are the same, but the manner, the rate at which they grow will differ per player. So everything, like sprint speed, acceleration, short pass, reactions... Heading accuracy, stand tackle, slide tackle, stamina strength, they will all be the specific stats that are affected by each role, but each individual player will see those individual stats rise or stay the same at different rates. Moving on from the defenders then into CDMs, presumably they will be different to centre mids and cams, obviously. At balanced, I see perhaps Nemanja Matic, older players aren't necessarily the best ones to give you a, a good idea because their stats are less likely to grow. At, uh, at different rates. So for Scott McTominay, uh, only composure and shot power at a glance are the ones that won't grow on balance. Everything else will rise. Deep lying playmaker, that's going to concentrate on his creative abilities. So his passing and his dribbling, stamina is going to be important for anybody in central midfield. And because he is a CDM, his tackling does still get a boost here, as does his skill moves. That's going to take 18 weeks to uh, to progress him from 77 to 78 rated with that those specific set of stats improving. Anchorman, that's going to improve his pace as well as defensive stats with slide tackle and interceptions, passing, agility, reactions and ball control on the dribbling side of things and of course stamina again. And weak foot goes up there. Ball winning midfielder, as you might expect, Pretty heavily on the defensive and physical side of things. Improvements there and reactions as well, which is in the dribbling set, but does link quite closely to the defensive set with regards to interceptions. And he'd get an improvement in his defensive work rate. Although, as you can see, already high, high work rates. And then defensive midfielder is pretty similar. Although you don't get the jumping, you do get the full defensive workout and the pace goes up for your CDM as well as, of course, the defensive work rate improvements there as well. With regards to centre mids, have a look at Andreas Pereira. His potential development plan. On balanced, not that much growth in a number of areas on balanced for Andreas Pereira. It will be different per individual, as we've seen. But for, uh, for central midfielder roles, the development plans you have at your disposal, the options are playmaker. Again, concentrating on the passing stats more so than anything else. And an improvement in the weak foot, so they can playmake better with either foot box to box rather understandably that's going to concentrate on pace and stamina and also on their ability to finish as they're going further forward no improvements on defensive stats for a box to box player although dribbling and ball control and the passing stats do improve ball winning midfielder again similar to a cdm concentrating heavily on the physical and defensive stats so they do get a couple extra uh, improvements with regards to passing and dribbling and then centre midfield is kind of more of an all-round option although Andreas Pereira in particular doesn't actually get the boost to sprint speed nor balance or composer so you are going to have to be uh, more selective when it comes to uh, who you have rather than setting all centre mids to the same thing it is going to differ per individual and you can see with the centre midfield 
uh, development player and honest centre mid, that will boost his skill moves up one as well. Now, sticking with the central role, uh, we'll have a look at Bruno Fernandes for Cam. Balanced, again, not everywhere. It might be tied into age. Yes, they're only Dedra Espero 24, Bruno Fernandes 25, but specifically Bruno Fernandes' position as well, or situation, he's higher rated. So you'd imagine that there's less growth there, so it won't grow as fast. And maybe if he was 21, he might get more of a boost than being uh, 25. I haven't done the further deep dive on the individual will learn that by doing an actual save, which of course will be coming with a Chelsea mini series here with the early access uh, content. So advanced playmaker you have for uh, Bruno Fernandes. That's going to cut down his progression from 14 weeks to 86 rated to just five, obviously very heavily going to suit his play style by default. Up goes the weak foot, attack positioning, and obviously with a playmaker role, as was the case previously, stamina, Dribbling stats and, crucially, passing stats will go up. As a shadow striker, you can set a count to a shadow striker so he's going to be more involved with the goal scoring rather than the goal creation. Understandably, finishing and long shots and volleys go up. More of a heavy focus on the dribbling side of things with shadow, with shadow striker. Ball control going up as well as agility rather than just composure and dribbling. With dynamo, that's going to be more in, along the lines of improving his physical stats. So pace is going to go up there. Dynamo, in general, gives the impression that it's going to be pace-related, just with the way that the word works in the English language. Skill moves will go up with Dynamo as well. Dribbling will improve. Defending slightly interceptions, not necessarily the go-to option or the go-to necessity for uh, an attacking midfielder. Uh, and then you can see the passing goes up as well. And with attacking midfielder, his attacking work rate will go up, although obviously it's already set to high, so it can't in this state. In this particular example, uh, pace goes up, uh, passing goes up across the board, or will do with most players. Obviously, Bruno Fernandes in this example doesn't in curve and long pass. And then ball control and penalties as well as stamina are also affected across the board with every player. But in this example, uh, not with Bruno Fernandes. With regards uh, right mids and left mids, We'll have a look at Daniel James here. So balanced by default, the majority of stats going up. Obviously, his pace is already very high, so that won't improve. With wide playmaker, it, again, playmaker is, in fact, very high. Plus three arrows on almost everything here for Daniel James, proving that his uh, potential is quite high. Skill moves up one as well. Stamina will go up slightly, but everything else passing-wise and dribbling will go with the individual dribbling stat as opposed to the rest of the dribbling category, will shoot up very fast. And you can see that cuts his progress from 13 weeks to 10 weeks. With regards to a wide midfielder, a little bit more concentrating on the dribbling, slightly on the pace, although again, for Daniel James, it won't improve his pace. Passing still getting a heavy uh, boost there with that one. The inverted wide midfielder, where if someone's going to cut inside, it's going to affect their finishing and their shot power as well as their dribbling balance, short passing and vision. Stamina still gets a boost as well. And then supportive midfielder, that's going to improve their crossing and their long passing, their pace, although not in this example with Daniel James. Reactions, ball control, stand tackle and interceptions, strangely. Although I guess support midfielder, they're going to drop slightly deeper and it is going to improve his defensive work rate, as you can see there. So not necessarily suited to Daniel James as an individual, but perhaps someone like Alfonso Davis, if you want to play him on the left-hand side of midfield rather than at left-back, you could use him as a supportive midfielder development plan to ensure that his defensive stats still work so that he is going to track back and be utilised best as a left-mid that can cover at left-back if you need him to. And to confirm, on the right-hand side, oh, they don't have any right-mids. Well, you would imagine, judging by the fact that it was the same for right-back and left-back, it will be the same for right-mid and left-mid. With regards to the... Left wing, right wing and striker roles and centre forward actually. We can get a comparison there with uh, Mason Greenwood. Left mid. Having a look at Anthony Martial for this particular example. The options are balanced, which improves most stats for Anthony Martial. Wide winger, which will improve his crossing and his dribbling as well as his attack positioning and his sprint speed. Inverted winger. See again, cutting inside, looking for goals more so than creative. Going to improve his finishing stats. Of course, you might want to consider using the position change functionality to move Anthony Martial to a striking role. There will be another video showing you how to use the position change 
system coming on the channel, either already on the channel or very soon. Uh, support winger, again, you would imagine that's going to be dropping back a little bit, although not necessarily fully in his defensive stats, because obviously whilst there is a boost, the defensive work rate is kind of going to be supporting, dropping from left wing to left mid, as opposed to left mid to left wing back or left back. But still going to improve his acceleration, his passing and his uh, reactions and ball control, as well as interceptions. So he can potentially get involved a little bit defensively. Then wide playmaker, again, attack positioning and then a heavy focus on the passing stats, as well as an improvement to his skill moves as well, which he doesn't get in any other of those particular examples and to confirm on the right hand side right wing should be the same development plans wide wing inverted supportive and wide playmaker indeed it is so then is there a difference between center forward and striker that's what i'm actually genuinely curious of here mason greenwood let's have a look at the defensive the defensive let's have a look at the development plan sorry for uh center forward so you've got balanced and he's going to improve Literally everywhere, Mason Greenwood. 19 weeks is what it will take him to go to 68 rated, though, from balanced. Obviously, you would expect with the updated ratings for FIFA 21, Mason Greenwood will be rated a lot higher than 67, and his potential will be higher, too, so he will grow quicker. Another option for you is Bombardier, which is effectively a deep-lying forward, which will improve his pace, his finishing, his stamina, his heading ability, and his reactions. So... Basically, a centre forward is by default kind of a deep line forward anyway, and you can kind of double down on that here. Will improve his attacking work rate, although, or will improve the player's attacking work rate, obviously. Mason Greenwood already has a high attacking work rate. There's the penetrator, which will uh, see an improvement to his skill moves and concentrate on his dribbling. So taking the ball to feet and getting around players, penetrating the defence with the ball at his feet. Sprint speed goes up, finishing goes up as well as long shots. The playmaker forward, also known as the Trequartista, will focus on his dribbling and his passing. So maybe you'd use that in conjunction with a strike partner. So you'd have the playmaker partner and then uh, a finishing partner alongside. And obviously you can see that improves his weak foot as well or would improve the player's weak foot. Centre forward for Mason Greenwood already having five-star weak foot and then pressing forward uh, is kind of a, a defensive forward. Depends on your in-game tactics, but if you want, if you are the sort of person like a Pep Guardiola that wants to have your offensive players press and try and win the ball back as soon as possible, then improving their stand tackle, your striker stand tackle, acceleration, attack positioning, interceptions, etc., and their dribbling stats as well is going to help when uh, trying to press, intercept passes, and then turn things around on a counter attack, and that will improve the centre forwards. Uh, defensive work rate and Mason Green was defensive work rate as well he would then be high high now I imagine that an outright striker would be slightly different to a centre forward let's have a look yes indeed it is so uh, looking at uh, Damani Mella at the minute balanced improves almost everything for him as the individual example other than agility you can select them to be a target man the Olivier Giroud type player which will improve their finishing their short passing as their in theory, going to be taking the ball in and then laying it off to teammates. Uh, balance, reactions, ball control, heading accuracy, and then the physical stats, most importantly for a target man, are going to be very important. Will improve their attacking work rate as well. Poacher, as you might imagine, purely a finisher. Sprint speed goes up. All but long shots goes up. And a poacher is traditionally closer to the goal, so won't need the long shot stat quite so much. And then dribbling goes up slightly with agility and reactions, although not in this example for or not in this individual example for uh, Mella with agility, and then stamina goes up too. The mobile striker, someone who's going to have free roam and move about and play anywhere in your front line, their skill moves will go up, their pace will go up, their stamina too, as well as their attack positioning, shot power and long shots. Someone's mobile, they might be further out, they might need the extra ability to shoot from distance. If they're mobile, they might be in places on the field where they need to make a short pass to then get somewhere else to finish. So that's where the short passing comes in. And obviously, if they're moving about, they're going to be getting the ball to feet more often. So ball control and dribbling need to improve there. Complete striker will give you a bit more passing, a bit more shooting and a bit more dribbling, as well as the stamina improvements and the weak foot boost as well. Although no changes to their sprint speed or acceleration. And that gives you a brief overview of what the development plans are are in FIFA 21 career mode. Let me know your feedback in the comment section down below. Let me know what sort of development plans you're going to prioritize for your particular play style once you get your hands on FIFA 21 career mode. And if there's anything else you want to know, 
about either this particular development plan video or the other mechanics in the game, like the interactive match sim, the player position changing, and anything else with regards training, which is going to be another short video I'll put out, then check the channel page for those videos, which should be out either already or coming in the next few hours or 24 hours within the next day at most. So for now, that's all for this one. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more early capture or, of course, full FIFA 21 when it comes out later in the year. Early October is the release date, although with EA Play, which was EA Access, we'll get even earlier uh, access to the game. And hopefully another early capture opportunity as well. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe with the notification bell tick so you don't miss anything else. And I'll see you next time.